Hey everyone, Couch Investor back to another video for today. So we have to talk about the big news coming out of China, specifically Alibaba. They have decided to spin off its business into six parts. Now this news comes out after suddenly the reappearance of Jack Ma in China. I believe he went and visited a school there, wants to revive entrepreneurship in the country. And this is after basically he disappeared for over a year after the whole and group IPO, fiasco, etc. Suddenly he reappears and then we have this news coming out as well. Are both of these things linked? No, I think it's just a coincidence and let's be honest, it shouldn't really matter that much. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about what this move actually means for investors because I know a lot of my viewers are actually do hold Alibaba. So we're gonna talk about that. Now, a quick reminder of what happened last quarter and the outlook that management gave Wall Street, which was again better than what feared. So to conclude this says here, looking ahead, we expect a continued recovery in consumer sentiment and economic activity. You can also view this graph right here. So of course it was a volatile year. This is a graph that shows China's total retail sales of social consumer goods, monthly growth rates. Of course, we saw a little uptick here from November to December. They think this is going to continue. And so Wall Street was pretty, let's say, happy with that. And if we look at the overall business for that quarter, so China commerce, it only declined 1% year over year. International grew 18%, local consumer services grew 6%, China, which is the logistics segment, revenue-wise grew 27% year over year, cloud only 3%, then the rest, the small one, digital media and entertainment, 6%, innovation initiatives and other decline 20. Of course, when you look at profitability of things, yes, things did improve a little bit, but income from operations, China commerce takes the biggest chunk of that, of income, all the rest is basically a loss. Now, if you look at adjusted EBITDA, yes, some improvements there as well, but overall, we've talked about this in the last video, they generated, I believe, over $11 billion in free cash flow. So basically the message here is the underlying business is generating a lot of cash for the company. And so a move to basically separate every business that we've just seen right here, six businesses will be created, one holding company, I think makes sense. I'm going to discuss this in this video, of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoy these type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, would we really appreciate that. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com for slash couch investor. So what basically happened here, this news came out, Alibaba reorganizes to unlock value. Of course, we know that this has also been pressured by the CCP to have a bit more control. They have been cracking down on big tech companies there as well. And this is a bit like the move that happened with Google. Alphabet became the holding company, basically. Google underneath it. Of course, there are still some talks in the United States that maybe they want to break up Google even more into other pieces. Might happen. Might happen now with other Chinese companies as well if this is a successful move. So Daniel Zhang here said to their employees via an email, the market is the best litmus test and each business group and company can pursue independent fundraising and IPOs when they're ready. Of course, now that they're all under Alibaba, you don't really know exactly how well this side of the business is run. Now that they'll be independent, most of them, not all. Again, this will be a litmus test and the market will decide and whether management there will decide to raise more capital, to go public remains to be seen but this will again be an opportunity for more investors or an opportunity to have a bit more control of the company when it comes to the government. So this is what will happen. So they say here, setting up individual business groups will enable quicker market response amid intensify competition from the likes of ByteDance, Pinduoduo, and JD as well. Of course, remember, once you have, let's say, those six business groups, so Cloud Intelligence Group, Taobao Tmall Commerce Group, which is basically the China Commerce, Local Services Group, China, which is Smart Logistics, Global Digital Commerce Group, Lazada, AliExpress, etc., and then Digital Media and Entertainment Group. So all of these groups will now have their own leaders, let's say. We've seen this with a lot of companies right now when we've seen the job cuts, right? Because when you start hiring tens of thousands of people, suddenly making decisions becomes a bit 
harder because you have to go through levels of management. Employees, are they happy? Are they not happy? When is the decision getting made? How many people does this message have to go through until something changes? So Alibaba being such a big business, having all these clusters right here, making the spin-off could accelerate the growth in each and every business, which obviously is a positive thing. So they say here that each CEO will report to a board of directors and assume full responsibility for company performance. Zhang will also serve as the CEO of the Cloud Intelligence Group. As previously announced, this group will house all cloud artificial intelligence activities and businesses like DingTalk. Then they go on here to tell us who's going to run each and every other segment out there. Now, each business group and other investments will retain the flexibility to raise outside capital and seek an initial public offering. But like I said before, there is one exemption and the exemption here is Taobao Tmall Commerce Group, which will remain an Alibaba Group wholly owned unit. And basically they reaffirm what I just said, this transformation will empower all our businesses to become more agile, enhance decision making and enable faster responses to market changes. Makes sense. And when it comes to employee incentives, they say here the interest of staff will be better aligned with the relevant business groups under the individual stock option plans. This will create greater ownership, improve employee morale and retention. Again, logical move to do. And they end by saying here at 24 years of age, Alibaba is welcoming a new opportunity for growth. And the market obviously reacted quite positively today. The stock was up close to 9%. Now I believe it's fluctuating between 7 and 8%. Positive reaction by the market, of course, because the focus will be on each and every segment. Less hassle, better decision-making, faster decision-making as well. So overall, each business and the Alibaba group, the holding company, should definitely benefit from this. And then if eventually in a couple of years' time, some of these business segments will IPO, of course, you will benefit from that as well. But overall, on a chart wise, right now this is on a weekly candle. You can see a little tick here close to the 200 day moving average. Didn't go over it, so keep that in mind. It is, yes, over the 20 and the 50 day moving average. MACD still bearish, by the way. So maybe if we can finish over that 200 day moving average, we can suddenly go over that zero and maybe turn the MACD into bullishness. RSI still neutral here. So not much to add there. So overall to conclude, pretty good move in my opinion. Again, some of it might see this as a move for more control by the CCP. Of course, Alibaba being a Chinese company, being very much in the, let's say, focus of the Chinese government with everything that has happened. Logical thing to say. But on the other side, pure business-wise, this is also a very, very good thing to do. And the focus will be each CEO will focus on that segment that he's assigned to, grow that. And then overall, the value will just grow for those that are shareholders of the Alibaba group. Eventually, if some of these businesses go public, you will be able to buy more shares of these specific companies. And so that will be it for this video. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you still own Alibaba? If so, what do you think about this move? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.